So the first staining technique that you'll learn this semester is the H and E stain. Hematoxylin and eosin working together in perfect harmony to provide a general overview of tissue morphology. Every block of tissue that goes to a pathology laboratory will have a H and E stain. And even within the research setting, you'll often find that every block will again have a H and E stain section performed, just because it is how people are trained to interpret morphology. So hematoxylin and eosin, how, how difficult could that be to get right? Well, as you'll see this semester, um, there are a variety of different methods for staining slides with H&E. Um, you'll personally get to utilise three different recipes of hematoxylin, which all have their value for different applications. The standard hematoxylin recipe that we'll use, as in the case of a H&E stain slide, is called Ehrlich's hematoxylin. Ehrlich's is a type of hematoxylin recipe that we refer to as being a regressive hematoxylin. By that, what we actually mean is that you'll originally stain the section for more than is required to demonstrate cell nuclei or other features, and then you will uh, treat the slide with dilute acid alcohol in order to regress the level of hematoxylin back to the level that is optimal. And in the process, you're removing the hematoxylin from non-target non background structures. If we look at this slide here, this is one that has been earmarked by Chris and Jess, our technicians, as being a, a good example of hematoxylin staining. And indeed, it looks pretty good. It's a section of colon, as you can probably make out there. Um, it appears to demonstrate all the features that you'd want to see, starting with cell nuclei. We can see these arrangements of cells within the mucosa. The nuclei are certainly well stained. Um, and if we look at these red blood cells here within this vein, uh, in the connective tissue. Certainly it's nice and bright and pink and so the blue and the red or the, the blue and the pink seem to be in correct balance. You may be able to make out a slight hint of blue within the the goblet cells. There's often a bit of debate as to whether that's uh, appropriate. Uh, there is no real uh, one answer to that. Some pathologists and researchers will like to see a little bit of hematoxylin staining there, but certainly if you differentiate that slide further in the acid alcohol, you can effectively remove that. But I actually quite like this. This is a, a good balance between the hematoxylin and the eosin, um, demonstrating all the features that you would want to see in a, in a nice H&E stain slide. Now, because we often try to interpret the outcomes of a H&E based upon the final product, it can be sometimes quite difficult to learn the process um, without being able to see both those stains separately. So we have in the laboratory some example slides which demonstrate the various stages of Ehrlich's hematoxylin being applied to a slide. So the first one is after 10 minutes in the hematoxylin, the slide has been rinsed to remove the excess stain, and then it's been blued, as we say, with the dilute ammonia to bring out the right colour. If we have a look at that slide, first thing we'll notice is that there is clearly only blue staining, so there has been no ears and applied to this one, and it's very intense. So you can see a lot of blue staining, obviously, within the nuclei. The mucin, as we said before, can actually have a little bit of blue colour, but in this case, it's really quite strong. The mucin within the goblet cells is just as strong as what it is within the nuclei. If we look at this band of smooth muscle, the muscularis mucosae, beneath the mucosal epithelium, see that that clearly also has a kind of a blue-grey colour, so it's still... Um, quite heavily stained. 
And if we go out into the connective tissue where we've got some arterioles and collagen, you can see the collagen itself has quite a grey or slightly blue colour to it. Um, going back perhaps to the, the nuclei, the other thing worth noting is that you know, within a, a well-stained nucleus, you often want there to be a little bit of light and shade so you can make out the various uh, nuclear features. And it's not too bad, but if you look at, for example, there is a, looks like a lymphocyte here within the connective tissue. It's very difficult to make out the nucleus from the rest of the uh, cytoplasm. And indeed, some of these nuclei within the uh, epithelium itself um, you know, are generally quite dark without being able to see nice contrast between the light and the, the darker areas. So ordinarily, therefore, what you need to do is to differentiate your slide in the acid alcohol. For how long? That's sometimes the question that is difficult to, to answer. In general, a few quick dips in the acid alcohol, straight to the water bath to rinse, re-blue, and you should get something that looks a little bit like this slide. So going back to a similar area as to what we just saw around about this location, go back to the 40x power again. And you see now this time, with the, the differentiation, there's certainly a dramatic reduction in the overall amount of staining on the slide. If we look within the mucosa, for example, now those goblet cells have just got a hint of blue, so they're not overpowering. They're certainly not blue to the same extent as the nuclei. If we look to the layer of smooth muscle that was just beneath the mucosa, so the muscularis mucosae here, and it's very pale. In fact, you can hardly see any colour to the muscle. And yet, importantly, the nuclei have not been adversely affected. They're still staying quite strongly. If we go out now into the connective tissue where there's collagen and some blood vessels and we see here that the collagen now, there's a little bit of contrast, we can see it, but I certainly wouldn't call it blue. Um, it's kind of almost a sort of muted off-white colour. So it's dramatically less than what we had before. So this is this point that you would ideally aim to get to when you're using the wet microscopes within the, um, the lab each week. You do one, two, three dips in acid alcohol, back to the water bath, blue the section with the ammonia, rinse that off, recheck it under the wet microscope. And this should be approximately the level of um, uh, staining that, that you should have. Okay? So this is quite nice. If you go too far, is that a problem? Well, yes, it is, obviously. So the longer that you leave the slide in the acid alcohol, the more hematoxylin that you'll remove. Again, we'll try to find a similar area to the last two slides. This slide has been intentionally left in the, uh, the acid alcohol, I'm guessing for maybe a minute or two. So if you leave it in for too long, um, we can see there is some nuclear staining. It's uh, reasonably pale um, and so it's quite difficult actually in places, especially within the connective tissue area there. Many of those nuclei are actually lacking uh, much staining. If we go out into the connective tissue area here, it's incredibly muted. Some of these fibroblasts and vascular endothelial cells, they have, any, have hardly any staining left in there at all. So this is just to demonstrate that you can um, by accident over differentiate and so really the best way to ensure that you're never over differentiating is to keep your differentiation step down to a level that's manageable, brief and manageable. So for myself, early H and E, one, two, three, straight to the water bath to rinse, blue and ammonia and you should be okay for most slides. However, if you have a, a, a personal technique where you leave it in for 10 seconds and then have a look, well, those 10 seconds might be too long. In some cases, it might be just right, but it's better to have maybe two or three seconds, blew it, check, and if you need to do more, then you can do more, okay? So that's the demonstration of the levels of differentiation. Ideally, what you want 
is what we saw in the well differentiated slide so that when you then combine that with your ears in for two minutes then you end up achieving the right balance where you have nice bright pink within areas like smooth muscle and within red blood cells we expect it to be nice and bright but at the same time having a really nice uh, intensity of nuclear staining as well. Okay, so if you do that, you should have no problems. Catch you later.